I'd like to call the March 18th, 2021 Airport Commission meeting to order. Will, will the airport manager please call the roll? Eoff. Here. Taufess. Here on Zoom. Olson. Here. Bias. Here. Stinga. Here. Adam, are there any changes to the agenda, approval of the agenda? Are there any objections to approving the agenda? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Approval of December 17th, 2020 regular meeting minutes. Are there any changes to the minutes? Are there any objections to approving the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. There are no scheduled public comments and presentations and there's no one in the public here. Item five, action items. Selection of chair and vice chair. May I have a nomination for the position of chair? I'll nominate James Stinga. Is there a second? I second that. Are there any other nominations? Are there any objections to selecting Commissioner Stenga as chair for 2021? Hearing none, Commissioner Stenga is the 2021 Airport Commission chair. May I have a nomination for the position of vice chair? I'll nominate Ralph A second? I'll second it. Are there any other nominations? Hearing Hearing none, are there any objections to selecting Commissioner Bias as vice chair for 2021? Hearing none, Commissioner Bias is the 2021 Airport Commission vice chair. Action item six, reports, airport manager. All right, thank you. Um, got a few items here, as you see on the agenda. Um, and I think... Uh, Number two will probably be the bulk of our, our discussion, but starting with number one here, winter conditions update. Um, as you all know, we've had uh, quite a bit of snow this year, um, and, and not just in, in one big dump or a couple of big snowfalls. We, we got a lot of little four-inch snow, six-inch, two-inch. Uh, our, our general fund uh, snow removal budget and snow hauling budget has been annihilated. So uh, those are the trucks and, and graders and blower you see in town. Um, and so we've uh, we've gotten into the contingency, and I think we may have uh, we may be nearing the end of our contingency for, for the in-town stuff. Uh, at the airport, we're we're not as bad. We're we're uh, running on fumes. I did a budget report uh, today through uh, through March, um, and uh, we've got uh, we've got about twenty percent left. So we're we're hopeful that the end is near for winter. Uh, from a budget perspective. But we do have uh, a modest contingency in the airport fund as well to take care of uh, unexpected expenditures, so, including snow removal. So if you have 20% left, how much has been spent on snow removal? Um, well, it, we, we, it's a bit complex. Uh, just the fuel uh, line item, we budget 11000 in in fuel alone. Um, there's some other line items in here that that we do hit for snow removal some shop uh shop time and, and different things so um but in fuel alone we've you know we've spent you know eight and a half somewhere in that range so um and as a reminder you know for snow removal um there is a bit of a lag at the airport we uh we immediately open up the mains in town to the schools hospitals etc um but about a day you know, day and a half, we'd like to get out and make sure that air, the runway and taxiways are, are taken care of. And then, um, you know, as time permits, we start getting to the apron and, and tie down areas and things like that. So I uh, hate to be a broken record, but it's, you know, uh, it's been a struggle this year to just keep up with everything. Um, I have gotten more positive uh, comments from airport uh, users uh, in the last uh, month, couple months, um, which is which is really good to hear. Um, in more recent times, we, we, uh, we've recognized for at least uh, some duration that the uh, edge lighting is needed to be unearthed, and, and they were working on that today, yesterday, this week. And I'm not sure who, who was assisting, whether it was one of our uh, FBOs 
or not, but somebody uh, was out there and, and um, shoveling and, and opening up and getting those uh, edge lighting exposed. So big, big thumbs up and thank you to the uh, Good Samaritan who was, who was doing that um, and doing it safely. And uh, we were out there as well this week. So we're trying to dig ourselves out, but um, no, no real big update. Um, I did not have an opportunity to schedule a, um, a public outreach meeting with, with users regarding the snow and ice control policy update. That's something we talked about at our last meeting and remains on the to-do list. And, and I think that once uh, once we get pack, past the winter season, we can um, be prepared to go into the winter 21-22 uh, season with a, a little bit more uh, updated snow and ice control policy. Not that there'll be substantive changes to that policy, but that it'll be um, reviewed, updated, and distributed so that it's more commonly understood what our objectives are and, and what people can expect to see out there from, from a snow and ice control perspective. So uh, that concludes my report on the winter conditions update, item number one. I have uh, a question. Yep. Questions now or at the end? Uh, anytime. Now is, now is great. Because I'm new to this. Um, do the airport users pay a fee to use that airport? There is uh, there, the fees that people would pay to use the airport. Uh, there's tie down fees for the aircrafts that, that are in tie downs, which is just a, a spot to keep your aircraft. Uh, then there are lease lots um, of various sizes that we that we lease to um, to folks or, or organizations that pay a, a lease rate, an annual lease rate for that lease, and then they choose to make improvements to it or allow tie downs in the, on that lease. Uh, and then the other, uh, which is the main revenue generation, is is lease. Uh, revenue, and then there is a uh, a landing fee for aircraft twelve thousand five twelve thousand five hundred pounds and over. That's a very antiquated, modest um, uh, landing fee, and and it, it's not often that we have aircraft that exceed twelve thousand five hundred that land there. But that's another user fee that that could generate uh, revenue. So the the main revenue stream for the airport is the lease and tie down fees. Okay. And then a second question, if I can, um, does that, uh, the snow removal, um, it could take a day to remove any snow. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, yeah, it depends on the amount of snowfall and the type of conditions that we see out there. If, if we get a big dump and we're unable to, uh, if there's four inches uh, or greater uh, or a big dump of snow and we're unable to get to the runway, we'll issue a notum through Kenai Flight Service and actually close the runway uh, and notify you know the amount of snow that we see out there, uh, and that lets uh, that lets pilots know that that there hasn't been maintenance on, on the facility. And a lot of times, uh, some aircraft choose whether or not to assume the risk and, and use the runway. We we don't, you know, it's not a uh, it's not a controlled airport or certificated airport, so we're not out there and and uh, there's no tower out there um, enforcing rules or requiring folks to. Um, have certain movements or, or use or not use the airport. So, so when we close the airport, when we close the runway, um, it's it's notifying folks that the conditions are are not maintained and and, and may uh, not be conducive for use. So, uh, and so yeah, it can be it can take uh, it may be the the next day before we're out there um, doing snow removal activities a lot of times. And that's one of the things that we we talked about at our last meeting, and, and we need to. Uh, uh, solidify in a, in a updated snow and ice control policy that's distributed to users and can I flight service uh, so that everybody's on, under the same understanding of the level of service at the airport. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions on item number one? Okay, uh, lease rate study discussion. Um, this is something that we haven't we haven't really talked about in uh, in five or six years. Um, I actually, I think I forgot to bring it in with me when um, Mr. Simmons was the airport, I mean, I'm sorry, when he was the city manager, uh, he uh, oversaw a fair market analysis of lease rates at the airport, which is, which needs to be conducted on a periodic basis. So some places do it every five years, some places do it every 10 years. Uh, it keeps us in line with our obligation to the FAA um, to charge fair market value for leases uh, that then go into the airport fund. Uh, part of accepting uh, millions of dollars in airport grant funds, they expect you to adhere to uh, 
between 40 and 50 grant assurances that then uh, places a lot of requirements on the city, one of which is to, is to ensure that, that the revenue streams for the airport are um, accurate and uh, sustaining uh, to uh, operate a, a, an airport sufficiently. So um, if you remember correctly, some of you I think were uh, maybe a part of it and involved. Um, we did a, a fair market value analysis by I think Darien Associates did it. Um, we identified uh, a, a percentage of fair market value for that lease rate. Um, and then the, the results of that study indicated that our lease rate was um, insufficiently uh, insufficient to, to meet that fair market value. And at that time, instead of just a fell swoop, one big action of increasing those rates, it was decided that rates would increase 2.5% every year moving forward. And that's what we've done and implemented. And so currently, every lease rate out there, once a year, it increases by 2.5%. Um, and, and what I'd like to discuss today is, is, to, is to some possible changes that we would bring back before the airport commission to formally approve. Um, but but uh, one of my concepts would, and this is, this is what Kenai does and, and many other airports, not just airports, but tie that increase to consumer price index. Uh, it's published uh, biannually in, uh, for Anchorage, the, the CPI. Um, and that way the lease rates should reflect what the consumer price index in our area uh, is, is doing. Um, I would not be surprised if 2.5% if every year has, has um, caused our lease rates to be on the higher end than they should be. You know, in 10 years, that's a 25% that's a increase in lease rates. So um, that would be the biggest, the biggest change that, that I'd like to talk about is, is uh, you know, tying in the uh, Anchorage CPI for the rent adjustment uh, made annually, uh, as well as the uh, hiring a consultant to, to perform the market analysis uh, at the airport. So uh, with that, uh, I'll turn it over to commissioners if they have any comments or questions on, on my proposal. I'm adamantly against a fair market analysis or is it, if I remember correctly, it was an appraisal last time by Darian or something along that line. And we went through this a lot. And if my memory is correct, it was like throwing a dart at a board trying to come up with, I mean, what is a fair market analysis out there? And that's why we went to the fixed rate because if I remember, the lease rates like exploded when that fair and everybody exploded and you started to lose tenants. And when we finally sat down and came up with the two and a half percent, that was tied into the leases. And that's what secured a lot of the construction out there. And had it not been tied into the two and a half percent, and we kept the fair market analysis, I don't think you would have seen the development out there that you've seen. In fact, I know you wouldn't have. And I don't think there's any basis for a fair market analysis on what, I mean, I can go back and dig that whole Darien thing up, but. Yeah, you know, there's certainly a challenge in, in, in finding comparables, if you will. You know, the, the hard part is we're, we're obligated to verify that that we're charging an appropriate amount for, for the leases. Wasn't uh, that two and a half percent? Didn't we tie that all into the leases then? Yes. So how can we go back and change that again now? Through this process. This is, and that's what I'm talking about. And yeah. for example, the anchor CPI is negative. No, I know, but year. that's the and first time in many, many years it's been negative. Right, but it hasn't exceeded two and a half percent in... But if you get a fair market analysis that comes back at a 100% value increase, which was the case. Right. Which is my yeah, understanding. I, I am 100% right. against a fair market analysis, and I'm 100% against the CPI. And we went through this a lot to establish the 2.5% increase annually. 
And I'm I, and I welcome alternatives and, and ways to to find something that fits our airport, right? And I that's thought the, we'd already accomplished yeah. that. Well, we we did, but it's it's become old enough that it it doesn't meet industry standards nor our municipal code for ensuring that we're charging a, f a fair amount for leasing property at the airport where we're federally obligated. Is that because you're a government that that you're taking? No, 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 it's tied in. Yeah, it's, there's it's, no end. It's all yeah. inclusive. No. And I can that was my understanding too. Yeah, we were done. Quite possibly. Anchorage, right? Well, I, yeah, I can't speak for Anchorage, but um, the concept is that, you know, we had, I don't have the date in front of me, but, you know, five or six years ago or more, uh, we identified what the value of those lease rates should be. That could be controversial, too, because that's uh, a consultant and the city and users trying to figure out what, what is that number, right? Well, it's but, like, a, but a value was established. It, it was, but... And then the 2.5% increase per year was established and agreed upon, and that's what all these people that are leasing think. And me, for one, if someone's going to want to change that five years after we've established it, I'm out. Mm -hmm. I will not build anymore. And so that's why we concluded on a 2.5% because it's a fixed number. It's everybody knows what's coming. And if all of a sudden we throw a, a random appraisal in here that could jack it up 100%, we're going to have a mass evacuation again. Mm -hmm. And I, for one, will be one. Yeah, I, I will not throw money into a lot that the city owns that I do not know what the lease rate's going to be for the next 30 years. And that's why we established the 2.5% in the lease. Because now everybody knows what it's going to be. And that's why you've seen the development out there that's happened. And if we change the game in the middle of the game, the rules, we're going to start a, a we're going to stir a hornet's nest. Sure. And I, I wholeheartedly agree that there's value in, in the certainty, uh, particularly with, with you know, development considerations. Um, where I have a hard time, where I have a hard time uh, figuring out is is how do we verify that that you know we're we're not off target. Uh, well, we whether went we're, through this whenever we did it, whatever that date was. We went through. There was no, if I if my memory is correct, and it probably isn't, there was no comparable airport. So we took all these other airports. Anchorage isn't comparable. Merrill's not. Lake Hood's not. McGrath's not. Nome's not. Kenai's not. Pick an airport. Nothing's comparable. So how can you come up with a fair market value, valuation when you have no comps? Mm -hmm. So we established what we felt was a fair market rate and then a 2.5% increase to keep up either above or below the CPI for the next 30 years. And that, and that may be what uh, I'd have to verify with the process to ensure that, that this, uh, this approach is acceptable uh, from a regulatory and FAA standpoint for ensuring that the airport is self-sustaining and that we're charging an appropriate amount. I have to verify that stuff. But it, it's, it's up to the airport commission to, to decide you know, the approach to this. And if, if you think that the certainty of providing a fixed amount rather than a variable amount that's based on market uh, fluctuations, that that outweighs and will be a, to a better benefit to the airport uh, by attracting users, retaining users, then, and then that, that's, you know, that can be the approach. Millions that, you know. of dollars started being thrown in construction at that airport when a fixed rate was established. Prior to that, I mean, go back and start looking at building permits and leases. Oh, yeah. No, there's... And yeah. prior to that, there was no development. Why? Because it was a unknown. Mm -hmm. Nobody, who's going to... I'm not going to go build if I don't know what my lease is in 10 years. Yeah. No, there's no way. 
And I'm a little taken back, to be honest with you, that this is even a discussion because I thought we secured this 2.5% whatever year ago that was for the duration of the lease and the new leases that were generated. That I thought this was done and put to bed. Uh, well, no, because the municipal code requires us to revisit it every five years. So we're well, I was actually, not aware of that, yeah. and that got snuck yeah. into the municipal code hmm. in addition to what we discussed. Hmm. And I'd heard rumors that it had, but hmm. I didn't take the time to dig into it. Hmm. Yeah, I will. I can. Uh, I can put together some uh, uh, some emails and some links and, and do a little more research and get and get that stuff sent out. I will go to, on record yeah. and say if we go back to a market analysis, I will not put another penny into that airport. Well, that's good. And I own five hangars. Yeah. That's... Hey, this is Charlene. I have a question. Sure. I'm kind of new to all this, um, and I don't have an airplane at the airport, so I mean that know a lot of this information but i'd just like to know are the leases yearly or multi-year and did you do comparables with um like um seward or soldovia airports and what their leases are uh the the leases are are due annually the term of the lease the duration is based on the, the amount of development that that takes place on that lease so uh no you know, that was Walled also. That should not be in the leases. Oh, well, let me... That sh in, to my recollection, that is not in the lease. It's it's a ground lease with a fixed amount, whether or not it's developed or not. Um, well, I can pull up the... Uh... I can pull up the standard lease. We, we do have some... Uh, Different leases out there, some that are that have been in place for a long time that still exist, and, and then new ones that come along use the uh, the new lease form. No, I don't think you do. Yeah. Um, that shouldn't be in there because that was a big contention. Yeah, that 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 was a. That was a huge contention. Yeah, and uh, and I unfortunately I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage because I didn't participate in the lease study that you spoke of earlier, nor the uh, uh, lease development. I think uh, I think you were on the airport commission at the time and probably spent some time with Mr. Simmons for the development of that. I remember Mr. Craig a lot about Yeah. Um, I was just reading through a lease, but I think maybe I was looking at uh, an old one. There is a... There's some dated 85 or 88. <laughs> I know. And then there are new ones that I think are 2010. 2010? I think. Okay, well, I'll, I'll have to pull that up. And, and what I can do is, you know, this was meant to... This was something that I added at the last minute as we were... As I was looking at um, our lease obligations and reading through our code on um, lease rate and and I went ooh we're we're a little bit a little bit behind on this so I better bring it up and I don't have uh, you know I didn't put a lot of time and effort in developing uh, you know a proposal for this and wanted to have this discussion with 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 the uh, commission to get your feelings and feedback um, as we're doing right now I know you'll have some very seriously disgruntled tenants if we try to change what was established. Hmm. Okay. And I know that. I mean, because that's been, that was a huge deal. Yeah. Well, and you'll bring, you bring good, you know, history uh, over many years at the airport uh, in this regard and, and what, what those expectations are, what people value in, you know, establishing leases out there. The certainty of the two and a half percent rather than the uncertainty an opportunity for it to be lower over over a ten year period, but uh, the but the history of the CPI going down, I mean yeah it went down last year in Anchorage, but that's how we came out at two and a half was the, the standardized balance, 
and what was fair and what was certain. And okay. it's typically in the 2%. CPI is typically in the 2, right? 2 something, 2 1, 2 8, 2 9, depending. This year will probably be a little higher. You know, we might get 5% this year with the administration. Yeah. Who I, knows? Um, that's stuff that I can put together, though, for you. And, and yeah, I'm 100% I'm yeah. against it. I like. We went through so much time, effort to get where we are today. And I firmly believe you see the development out there today because it's a standardized, certain future. And it's fair for everyone. It's fair for the users and the, and the landlord. Okay. And I wish I could get 2.5% on every one of my leases increase a year. I can't. Right. I can't as a landlord. Right. So as, a, as the city of Soldotna being the landlord, I would think they'd be ecstatic. Yes, with the, with the caveat that, that our objective is, is not to necessarily to make money purely. We want to think about it in a, in, a, in a more kind of a broader sense that we also want to attract more users. And you are attracting more users. To therefore make more money. Because it is a certainty. Yeah, yeah. If we take that certainty out, Kyle, we're going to have another train wreck. Yeah, okay. And we've been down this road twice in the last 20 years. The, the, the one thing that I, you know, the, and the reason I bring this up, and I know that it's, it's, it's not a pleasant conversation sometimes when we're dealing with, you know, money changes at the airport, but uh, that we do, the, the city does have uh, an obligation to verify that, that we're, we're charging the right amount for these leases. And, and how we go about that is, so I think. So what good is the lease if it's, if 10 years ago we signed this 2.5% adjusted every five years or whatever it is, I think it's 2.5% two and two and adjusted every five years, if I remember right. Is that right, or is it adjusted every year? Every year. The 2.5% okay. the increase? Every year. Okay. Yeah. I forgot how it was all yeah. worded. Uh, so if I got, I've signed these leases, I developed, I've thrown my half a million bucks in out there or whatever it is, and now the landlord hands me a different lease and says, oh, by the way, we're going to have a different, we're going to change your lease, your lease isn't good anymore? Again? Again? Yeah, I'm, I'm out, I, dude. I'm, I am out. Oh, I agree. There's a lot of consternation over, over this process, very similar to the fact that, that it's, it's, it turns out, too, you can't get more than 35 years. And that alone, and this has been a big topic of discussion, that will stifle development as well because you, you want to invest a million dollars or a half a million and you sign on the docket that says the government gets it in 35 years, no ifs, ands, or buts, that's a consequence of, of building at a federally obligated airport. There was no ifs, ands, or buts. We don't get a choice on that. Mm -hmm. You cannot sign a lease that gives you more than 35 years for your million-dollar investment. No choice whatsoever. And, and that, but the, you need to have certainty for that 35 years. Agreed. I agree, yeah. Uh, uh, but, but I believe during the lease, standard lease development that, that to a certain degree, at some point, there has to be good faith that the government's going to treat folks right. Meaning at, at the end of 35 ye years, the city's not going to say, good deal for us, thank you for that hangar, contract says you're out, you're gone. No. The only reason that exists is if... The feds say if you have to put in a taxiway, if an ARF building, you know, and then if that is a problem, you have to operate in good faith and probably pay the person, pay that entity, pay that thing and for, which for has the happened gun. out there in the past. Right. And, and so, um, but there's, I'm, I know that there's no getting around that. We can't sign it. We can't uh, tell you that your huge investment is, is going to be yours at the end of the, end of the day. It's always open it in on that. And, and the, and the fair market requirement, the, the Fed requirement to show that we're uh, adequately charging airport lands for, for their use, uh, I believe, is, is, not, is not a discretionary thing, too. And so the, I don't know what that looks like, and it's my job to take the wishes of the council and try and figure out a, a way that meets those obligations, and that's what we're going we're gonna to eventually do. Um, my understanding is that is that the interval that you 
check up on that. I don't know. I don't know if there's a max one at that. I, I think Kenai does it every ten years. Our code says we do it every five years. Was that a choice that we made? Perhaps sounds like it. If Kenai so does it every ten years, this is a city ordinance, not a federal. The city ordinance says that we uh, we. I have to pull it up. That we check that we do it every. Uh, but there's five nothing years. from FAA saying that you have to. Uh, that's part of the doc That's part of the stuff. I'll get back to you. The, the language that says that we're we're required to to have a uh, uh, you know check our revenues, fair market value for for lease properties. I think also with you know the the airport's budget in mind, that if you do go to the CPA CPI and lease rates go down, well now your operating budget just got cut. Where now if you have a two and a half percent increase every single year, you know what you're going to be getting every single year. You know what you have to work oh, yeah. with. And especially, like, there was um, two, possibly four hangers going to be built in the next couple. I mean, those are already leased, I believe. You know, so now you know going in, okay, we have this many leased lots. Mm -hmm. This is how much money we make off of them. Every year we get 2.5% on top of that. So for the city, in my opinion, my opinion, I, it, it's better for the city because you have certainty as long as well as your tenant has certainty. Oh, I agree, actually. I, I, I agree. I, I know that our finance director would love, would love that certainty, too, yeah. and, 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 and me, too. This is my first foray into it. I don't have the experience that uh, Commissioner Stanga does, so I'm learning a lot. Yeah, well, my, uh, I, I like that certainty. I think that's good. And, yeah. and my goal is to, is to have that airport succeed. Right, I don't want to drive people away. So, uh, don't take this as as this is this is Kyle's way to try and make money for the airport. It's that's not the case at all. Yeah. It's 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 my uh, my duty to make sure that we're following the rules, which says that we do a fair market value. And maybe that needs to change. And, See, and, and I thought yeah. we took. I know it was agreed upon that that was leaving that five year fair market value was no longer going to happen when we established the two and a half percent increase per year that was the whole reason for doing the two and a half percent increase per year was to make the certainty and not go through the, I mean that even that analysis that the city did whenever they did it I mean that was an expensive thing yeah so and I believe it's still in the city code that got slipped back in after the fact, I, I, I did. Well, the one I printed was from 2004, and they actually charged the cost of the fair market value analysis back to the lessee, 50% of it. Yeah, and that was a big deal. Yeah. Kyle, we had a. It was a hornet's nest like you've never seen. Well, wasn't there. Uh, wasn't there some trigger, and maybe this was it, where there was a, a large number of folks that were private pilots in Kenai that, that kind of that yeah, moved over here? Yeah, they came over to Soldotna because of the certainty. That's, and, and I remember that I was that, told there was and some... A, we lost a lot of people that were going to build out there when that fair market analysis came out, and they just tried to disperse it to the tenants, the cost of it. And then the lease rates, here comes a letter from the city saying the lease rates are going to double. Because of this report from Darian, hmm. I don't think that's. I'm not willing to go down that road again. Okay, so good. So the, the feedback I'm hearing is that the, the two and a half percent certainty is is good. Um, uh, I will I will look into and verify uh, FAA obligations versus city uh, city bylaws and see if there's a discrepancy there and. Um, and bring that back to the commission so that you guys can take a look at that and make a recommendation on on either updating our code, changing our code, or um, you know how you want to approach what we need to do to satisfy FAA. Hey, right. Kyle, can you yeah. hear me? Yes, go ahead, Kurt. How do we compare uh, currently with Kenai, Homer, and Seward uh, airports? I mean. Uh, are we competitive with the mechanism that we're using now? Um, I'm not equipped to answer that specifically. Uh, I can generically say that I, I believe that that we are competitive, and um, 
I, I, I don't think it's a, a large bandwidth of, of uh, variation between them. I think we're I think we're pretty similar, if not a little bit less. We're less than Kenai. Yeah. Uh, I don't recall Seward and Homer or Lake Hood. Um, when we did our master plan that got completed in 17, I think, or 18, we I have a page on that, Kurt, and I uh, I will include that and share that when I put some materials together. Well, the, the reason I ask is I've, uh, over the last 10 or 15 years, I've seen a number of oil companies pull out of Alaska because there was no physical certainty. You know, the tax structure on them would change uh, sometimes uh, as recent as, I mean, every two years. And when they're building something or developing something uh, and they don't know what they're going to be paying, uh, they ultimately they pull out. I mean, for all uh, intents and purposes right now, ConocoPhillips is out of the state. They've got like eight or ten people in their office um, left out of that uh, building downtown. Uh, Marathon pulled out. Uh, BDB pulled out. Exxon pulled out. Uh, I can give you half a dozen smaller ones, but I mean, they pulled out because there's no physical certainty. So if it's, I mean, if it's working and we're competitive, we may want to look at the oil companies. I wholeheartedly agree. Okay, excellent. Yeah. I think a lot to do with fair market value, too, is how much somebody is willing to pay for something and seeing how you have development happening every single year out there, that it is something that's desirable. My two cents. And you can look at, I think, in that master plan, I think Mark Lanning had the number of aircraft that were sitting at Soldotton Airport and where they were registered to what owners. There's a whole lot of airplanes from Kenai, if I remember right, sitting at Soldotton Airport. I would think that's a positive thing for Soldotton. Uh, okay, I will, uh, I, will, I will double check and make sure that the... Uh, the paperwork that I was uh, that I was sent and uh, and looking through is accurate, um, and I'll reach out to you, Jim, if uh, if I've got some questions on some of that history stuff because that's what I was looking at. Is... I think I have a big old box full of it. Okay, well, don't don't get it out yet. Let me let me sift through my stuff and and double check stuff because now I'm confusing myself looking at, at this stuff while on the fly, and some of this code stuff is not the same as the letter that was issued in 2004. Uh, and etc. So I'll I'll sort that out. But this is this is accomplishing my goal of having this conversation with the commission and getting your feedback on on lease rates and and renewals and and such. Yes. I can tell you straight up, Kyle. I just took over two lots. I was going to build another hangar. If this happens, I'm out. I will not do it. I need certainty. Right. And that's why we did what we did. And I think that, you know, you drive out there, and I think other people's checkbooks agree. There's been a, a lot of really good development in the last There's five years. There's been a lot of development for two reasons. The certainty of the lease rates and the amount of money you secured for the improvements from the federal government. Those are the two reasons we have the airport we have today. Yeah. We take the certainty out. You take... Well, the, the improvements that you've provided aren't going to go away. I mean, they're not going to depreciate and go away, but that, that's why we have the airport we have. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, good, good feedback. The airport pays for itself. It does. I mean, In fact, goal yeah, that was our goal. Yep. It, 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 it does. In fact, uh, we have successfully paid off our interfund loan uh, that we took from the general fund in order to, to pay our local match for some of the federal improvements. So we took on uh, a loan so that we could pay our, our small local match, uh, and we paid that off, and we are not in the red. Our and, and let's not forget, even if that airport does go into the red, it provides a quality of life an attractant to this community where other parts of this city is wearing the big hat yeah. benefits. 
Right. Yeah. And that that conversation, I think, happened before my time more often because of the uh, the fund balance. But is uh, the fund balance now with all the de- especially with all this development that we've had over the last you know five, eight, ten years? Um, it's self sustaining. It is. Yeah, and it's a revenues, quality of life. And revenues exceed expenditures. Huge. And you yeah. walk in the hospital and you see that, I mean, it, it just, that airport is part of the reason we have the quality of medical that we have here, in my opinion. Go out there and see how many doctors are out there in their hangars, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if we take away, <clears throat> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Any other comments or questions on the lease rate study discussion? Number item number uh, two. I guess one more thing, Kyle. When do the actual um, lessees would they be notified of such changes to where they could come to meetings and voice their opinions? Yeah, cer- certainly. We should um, probably move this meeting to the sports center. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, you know any uh, any substantive changes. You know we would we would encourage folks to provide their feedback and, and have that opportunity. Um, you know, and we, we would do that through through advertisement and etc. But um, we would, we'd certainly seek that you know, for sure. And yeah. any any action that would be taken would come first as a recommendation as a as an action item from the commission. City to the city council, who would uh, make a decision based on the information in front of them, including what the recommendation of the airport commission is. Gotcha. Okay. I mean, they'll make their independent decision, but it, you know, they base it on the information that they have. One one component of that is the is the recommendation of, of this board. So. Okay. Thank you. So, um, but I uh, I will um, put some more uh, time into this with the uh, information I've been given tonight and. Uh, and have some more uh, more data for the commission at our next meeting. Well, I a couple things. I think uh, there was. I have had um, folks inquire about you know lease um, renewals and and you know cost of lease and lease development, and uh, you know and and looking for certainty when, when they're looking at making uh, developments at the airport. And uh, I've had several discussions over the 2.5% and um, developers question that and just say it doesn't, it doesn't vary. It's just 2.5% forever. It always goes up no matter what uh, things are doing in your area. And the answer is currently that's what it is. And then um, uh, looking, at, uh, looking at our um, forms and letters and, and such from the last go-around. Uh, that referenced our, our city code, and I, I'll, I'll be uh, significantly embarrassed if I if I um, didn't do my due diligence and double check to make sure that code hadn't changed. Um, so, but that's what I'll be doing after this, before I go home. So, but I'll, I'll, I'll be prepared for uh, to make a presentation to you guys at the at the next meeting. Well, if it if it, if it is still in there and. You're not significantly embarrassed, and I am. I can tell you it was agreed upon that it was not going to be in there. Okay. Yeah, I I was here, but not, not very involved. I think at that time, and as uh, Commissioner Enoff said, I, I, I do understand and recognize that I think you spent a lot of time um, as a commissioner and personally assisting the city uh, I don't know if it was an assistance or a pain but we well there's no denying what's happened at the airport over the last 10 years you know and the I mean the meeting was right sitting right there and it was Kurt Erickson who has a hangar now Bart Bias who has three two or three hangers Ron Davis myself and everyone at that meeting with Machicki, he was the mayor, and Larry Simmons, and Lisa Parker, and I be, believe Greg Anderson even 
just came to town and was in one of our meetings as well. And uh, everyone there put their money where they said, if we'll do this, we'll develop more. And it was agreed upon to keep that 2.5% and tie it. And we, they, I, I remember right, all the leases were changed. And that was, there was an addenda to the lease for 2.5%. And if you do the, the math on the numbers, it really isn't a lot of money per lease lot. But if all of a sudden you start spending money on appraisals and then double the value of the lease, that's a big deal. And it's, and I'm going back on my tangent, but there's no certainty. But because of that certainty, you see the development that has occurred. Certainly no denying that. There's been, and, and it's reflected in the finances of the, of the airport fund, which has enabled us to pay our local match to get the grants, be successful in getting the grants to, to add the asphalt. And the, I don't think the wheel's broke. <laughs> I would agree. We got time to look through that. Okay, um, moving on to grass slash field maintenance, item number three. Um, this is something that's been on our radar for some time. Uh, um, the good news is uh, the city of Kenai is purchasing new mowing equipment and uh, will likely surplus uh, their equipment, uh, I think probably not uh, at the beginning of the summer, but maybe uh, later in the summer, depending on when they receive their new equipment. So I've reached out to Kenai and I'm um, going to be in discussions with them about potentially acquiring that, that piece of equipment. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to note that we had kind of earmarked for uh, potentially using to purchase um, grass and, and field and mowing equipment was a, uh, uh, a new grant that has become available uh, to federally obligated airports. Uh, not a not a not a big dollar grant. Uh, it's thirteen thousand um, dollars, but it is a uh, a federal assistance grant associated with the uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, similar to the, the thirty thousand that we received previously through the CARES Act. Uh, this is a slightly different uh, appropriation through Congress, but our allocation was thirteen thousand dollars, and uh, it can be used for um, most. Uh, most airport expenditures, including personnel um, or equipment purchases. So uh, we've submitted, I've submitted an application for that, um, and we'll be requesting council authorization to uh, um, accept that grant and then apply it um, directly to the uh, uh, airport fund. Uh, it's uh, like the CARES Act grant, the use of the allowable expenditures is extremely broad, and it can be used for... Um, Costs related to operations, personnel, cleaning, sanitation, janitorial services, um, airport debt service payments, um, really, really, really broadly. The, the last, as a reminder, the last CARES Act grant we got for the airport, we, we applied it towards personnel uh, and, and just plunked it down into the airport fund, which was um, And if great. you're talking snow expenses this year and fuel 11 grand, Yep, it's buy some fuel. It'll be it'll be a, a welcome addition to the to the airport fund. So, um, in, in reference to the lawnmower, or whatever, we no longer have available um, shovel shaper. Yeah, th that's correct. Yep, we we uh, we no longer have a agricultural maintenance agreement. Uh, <laughs> that that was the terminology that that we used. Um, it was for it was uh, Vern Schneider that 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 had that lease, that agricultural lease. At that time, it became a agricultural uh, maintenance agreement with uh, uh, Dean Robinson. Um, he indicated that it's uh, it's not really worthwhile, and uh, from his perspective, as far as the quality and condition of the of the product that, they, that we get out of there, uh, it's also not harmonious with. Um, federally obligated airport to have, um, you know, Timothy Hay and a haying operation in, in your infield for various reasons. 
So, so we're even investigating ways to, uh, to get out of that business. Um, <laughs> last Does year, Does anything need to be done with it? Can you just let it grow? There, there is. Uh, different airports have different requirements. Military air, airports have a, like a six-inch requirement. Other ones have uh, different varying heights. A lot of it has to do with animal attractiveness, things of that nature. So. Yeah, so so there is there is some guidance on on proper infill etiquette and, and care, and so we're trying to be cognizant of that and and figure out a good solution. Um, but I believe uh, I believe Dean was I, I know I think Vern was was putting about twenty twenty thousand dollars worth of fertilizer down, yeah, we, we, um, since I which we no longer do, yeah. for the record. Um, so uh, another work in progress there, but. Uh, last year, we we, um, we have a Kubota and a mower that we use for right away along roads and such. But what what that thing needs at 150 acres or whatever it may be is a bat wing mower or something bigger because it took it took our crews a lot of podcasts to mow out there <laughs> <laughs> with that little riding mower. Are you thinking maybe just fund it with a city piece of equipment and a city? employee either that or uh competitively bid uh, solicit a bid for um mowing can you get a and uh, this is probably a bad question can you get you're really good at securing federal money can you secure a federal grant for another piece of uh, equipment looked into that and uh mowing equipment's not eligible it's not no um I'm going to work a few more angles and see if, you know, continue to try and, and go that route. And that's why I, I've reached out to Kenai thinking if, if, that was a, if that was an F, uh, FAA purchase piece of equipment, it can probably be transferred to another obligated airport uh, free of charge. And, and even if it wasn't, uh, I'll, I'll still um, ask as the good neighbor yeah. uh, to see if we can get a good deal and, and acquire that through, through right. their surplus. So, uh, But I have also reached out to some contractors, including Dean, to, to – inquire about what it would take to you know have somebody else do it too because whether we do it in-house there's there's it seems like it's just been when you've had it hey it's just in the fall so one time a year so obviously apparently the height requirements you know you could maybe just if you own the equipment have it done once or have it guys out there once or twice a year when they're free Yep, and that's that's the sweet spot I'm going to try and figure out is is if it if it's you know do we have that equipment that we own and maintain plus the operator cost for the duration that he's doing that not something else versus what what the annual cost would be if I put it on the street and have people with the equipment just come in and yeah. mow it. So that's uh, another work in progress. Um, I, uh, airport manager item number four: the runway project progress update. No big uh, report here. We're still in winter shutdown. Uh, we have been working with a contractor. To, we did make one small payment for, for a little bit of work and, and some stockpile payment for materials that are, that are on site and uh, prepared to go in. We will get a, a, a schedule update here soon. Um, I plan to schedule uh, some coordination meetings with airport users probably um, within the month, probably in the month of April, in preparation for you know, contractor startup in May. Um, obviously, there will be impacts to the airport users as we shut down that uh, runway, 725. Just as a reminder, the gravel strip will remain open, uh, and FAA uh, will allow us to use uh, the parallel taxiway as a temporary runway. So there will be signage and striping that the contractor will need to uh, implement to turn that parallel taxiway into a temporary runway. So for the most part, uh, you know, some turning movements and apron movements will be a little bit different. Um, but we'll be able to accommodate most users. There are a few users, those that need the entire 5,000 feet, um, that, that will be um, impacted, that, uh, that we'll reach out to and, and, and try to inform that they'll need to find some alternatives if, if they need that full 5,000 for the duration of this rehab project. In your estimate, estimate how long is this project? It'll, it'll go all the way until freeze up. Do you think it'll be complete or freeze up? Yes. The 
runway closure might be shorter than that. Um, but we are planning on being fully complete by freeze up. Uh, one last thing, we're working uh, through a change order with the contractor. Uh, the uh, FAA inquired about um, putting a small building out there to house the PAPI equipment rather than having it on a rack. Makes it uh, more conducive to uh, ongoing maintenance to the PAPIs. And, and we had no objection from an airport uh, perspective. And so um, the FAA has provided that um, hut, if you will, that little building. And uh, we're working with the contractor to make some changes for the foundation to install that little red and white typical airport hut you'd see at an airport that should be un unobtrusive. And that's all I have for the uh, runway project update at the moment. Any questions on that project? Okay, the last item I have is the delinquent account status. Um, I've apprised the uh, commission on occasion uh, over a couple of delinquent accounts. Um, since then, I've reached out to our city attorney uh, in Anchorage, um, who's putting together uh, the appropriate forms uh, to file a, a claim of lien on, on an aircraft, uh, and he's following the FAA protocol uh, for that purpose. Uh, the tail number is uh, November uh, 6127 Bravo. Uh, it's been at the airport for quite some time. We have not had the uh, ability to communicate with the owner, uh, who we understand may be down south. Um, it's been overdue for many years. We've had periodic payments from uh, other people. Uh, in 2016, we had a $160 payment made by a friend. Uh, in 2016, we had a, a $200 payment made by uh an ex-wife, we believe, in 2019, a $650 payment uh, that was made by uh, the same person. Uh, the current balance overdue is um, $1,735. Uh, we can realistically believe that we're not going to continue to receive payments. So I reached out to the city attorney to, to find out what the uh, proper protocol was, whether it's the city impounds it, uh, auctions it, how that works with an aircraft, and, and he indicated that there is a process established by FAA, and he's currently working on the forms and, and um, procedure uh, for us to follow on, on that regard. Um, while he does that, he'll, he'll do that in a framework with the understanding that, that we'll use this process for other delinquent accounts. We've got, you know, maybe three or four um, that aren't in as bad arrears as this is, but it would be good to have a process to point to when we reach out to these folks so that they understand that there's a process in place if, they're, if they refuse to pay their fees and, and carry a balance with the city. Um, as you know, as a city, my, my policy, uh, I'm, I'm extremely reluctant to, uh, to touch uh, aircraft and, and uh, we don't chain props or things of that nature anymore. You know, we do put notices, uh, you know, sticky notes and notices on the, on, the, uh, on the aircraft or on the door or something of that nature. Anytime we have to move an aircraft, uh, whether it's with uh, generally with the uh, aircraft owner's permission, uh, we um, have got great assistance from uh, FBOs and aircraft mechanics and uh, aircraft folks out there to assist us with moving things with, air, with owner's permission. So I wanted to just keep the commission updated that we do have that one significantly delinquent account that, that we will, uh, that we have begun to incur some attorney expenses to assist with putting together the the process to take care of that. So, ongoing. A deal is a deal. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and that concludes my uh, airport manager report. Okay, we'll move on to a commission chair report from the chair. And I do not have a report, which puts us at the maintenance department manager. I do not see Scotty some. Here, nor is he on the line. No, he he asked if uh, if he should attend. I, I let him know that uh, that I think that um, he did a great job presenting at our last meeting. Uh, that I'd give a brief update that we're trying to unearth the ed uh, edge lighting and uh, keep up with the snow out there, and uh, that I'd take any comments or questions from the commission and relay them to him if there are any. And my only uh, comment to him would be: we discussed last time the snow removal, and the, with this winter. I think it's been an exceptional job. Great, I'll, I'll let them know. 
Uh, city manager, I do not see the city manager here, no report. Are there any public comments? I see no members of the public here. Uh, council comments. I do not see Council Parker, Councilwoman Parker here. Commissioner comments. Any comments from the commissioners? Adjournment. I think this meeting is adjourned. If I had a gavel, I would hit something. <laughs>